welcome to the latest edition of Prep Talk. Prep Talk is the one and only internet-based radio broadcast dedicated to high school sports in the Lane County, uh, Eugene, Oregon area. I'm Chris Park, along with my partner, Marvin Hammersmith. Marv, what have we got going today on Prep Talk? Well, you know, as uh, usual, we're going to review some of last week's games. Uh, there were some big games last week. We're going to have an interview with Sayuslaw coach Tim Dotson. Uh, they have a big game coming up this week. They certainly do. Uh, we're going to, of course, uh, preview this week's games and uh, review the ever-important OSAA rankings. And the playoff positioning. Yeah, it's getting close. This is the last regular season week right here. It boils down to this. I do have some news also, Marvin. I, I might just interject here for our listeners. We now have a Twitter account, and that is at Prep Talk Eugene. That's our Twitter account, so you can like us on Twitter, and uh, that's actually not the right terminology. Is it? You follow us, excuse me. Yes. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Um, Still and new to this stuff, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Chris Park, my partner, is now entering the 21st century, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> Let me correct that. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, at Prep Talk Eugene, uh, it's a good way to uh, keep up to date with what we've got going on and, and find uh, how to get to our show. So I just wanted to give an update there. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to seeing how we do. All right, well, let's talk about some of the games from uh, last week, uh, Marv. Do you want to start with the, uh, the 6A games? I will. Uh, Sheldon defeated Thurston 56-23. to Crater came up and defeated South Eugene 42-32. to you know, and the interesting thing there, <clears throat> I was uh, surprised by the uh, 32 points that South Eugene put up on Crater. Crater's been playing really good defense as, as of late. Um, and South Eugene was only down by three after the third quarter. Mm, wow. So uh, they they were in the ball game all the way through. Crater just pulled away in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's two wins in a row for Crater. It is. Um, how about 4A scores, Chris? In 4A, Cottage Grove 61 and Sisters 14. Uh, Cottage Grove continues to be led by quarterback Scotty Hittner. Great offense, very balanced Cottage Grove. Elmira was home, and they beat Lapine 55-16. to 16. And uh, let's see, Sweet Home 33, Junction City 6. Um, there was uh, no game for Sayuslaw. They are idle. Uh, the one score that jumps out to me, it surprises me that Sweet Home defeated Junction City so soundly. I thought that uh, that would be a closer game. Yeah, I thought so too. Um, I think uh, Junction City um, coming off a loss to Cottage <coughs> Grove, um, a little bit of a letdown on the road there at Sweet Home. That's too bad, but they'll, uh, they'll have to get it back together again uh, for the 4A. The 4A has kind of taken shape. Cottage Grove is clearly in control of the Sky M. As long as they win next week, they'll be just fine. It's a little more confusing for the other leagues. Uh, 3A isn't matched up quite yet. What about 5A, Marvin? 5A, Ashland 34, Willamette 20, Churchill 47, North Eugene 6, Springfield 41, Marist 21, which was, uh, everyone's game of the week last week. Uh, you know, of note, um, Close game at half, 21 to 14, but uh, you know another another week. Uh, Marist has uh, 100 yards and penalties. Oh boy, yeah, that'll kill you. Um, so yeah, that that did, and it did hurt them in, in uh, key times of the game. And I was at that uh, that game. Uh, this, did you go to that game? I was there as well. Yes. Uh, and I have to say, uh, yeah, penalties hurt Marist. I was very impressed with Trevor Watson. Um, he seems like he puts a lot of velocity on his passes, and he seemed to be very on target. He's improved a lot from last year, I thought. Uh, that kid runs like the wind. He's, okay. he's fast, and he makes really good fakes. Uh, he had 160-some yards rushing with three TDs, uh, a couple really long, long runs. Springfield was balanced, I thought, with their passing and uh, their running. The one thing I want to note in 5A, though, Chris, is Ashland almost had a bit of a letdown. Uh, last Friday, they were down, in fact, fourteen to nothing to Willamette, and uh, but they did end up coming back and uh, scoring a lot of points, getting it together and scoring some points in the second half to pull away. But Willamette really put up a good fight. Yeah, I agree. And and you know, my thought on that whole thing was Willamette's a different team uh, without their usual quarterback. Um, Darius Jackson had to fill in for a few games. He's a great athlete, 
but when you have Cozy Mitchell at quarterback and then Darius Jackson at receiver, they're a much stronger team. So they may have been able to surprise. Um, they connected uh, twice early. Yeah. It was uh, uh, it, again, you know, maybe it's getting close to the end of the season. Maybe Ashland was overlooking Willamette a little bit, um, but uh, Willamette uh, played a really good game. So they've got a lot to be proud of. Uh, how about 3A, Chris? What happened in 3A? Uh, in uh, 3A, uh, let's see, Pleasant Hill 28, Sio 24. This was the big game um, in the uh, 3A. Um, Pleasant Hill was actually down 24 to 14 uh, going into the fourth quarter. Um, and they um, ended up pulling out the uh, two touchdowns unanswered to win 28 to, to 24. Uh, their running back, Charlie Ward, had 150 yards rushing. Um, Pleasant Hill uh, really needed that win for the Pac West, and and that's going to help them a lot right now. They're three and two in the league. The top four teams will make the playoffs. Um, I believe that puts them slightly ahead of Sio. Uh, another big game though coming up for Pleasant Hill. They'll be at Harrisburg next week. So Pleasant Hill um, needs to to win again. I believe probably win their next two to get into the playoffs. Uh, not everybody makes it in 3A, so you got to be in the top four, and this is one of the toughest leagues the Pac West is. Uh, so just being in the top four is a good thing there. Let's see, Sandy M. Christian, 55, Creswell at home, zero. You know, one, an interesting fact on that Pleasant Hill game, Sayo scored 24 points, and normally a person would think that that's three touchdowns and a field goal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sio actually scored three touchdowns and converted all three two-point extra points. Oh, interesting. They don't have a kicker, huh? Uh, apparently not, but I'll tell you, they must have the two-point conversion down because they converted all three of them. Yeah, well, that can help. It uh, kept them in the game there. It absolutely did. Uh, Two-way, the only score to report, North Douglas 16, Oak Ridge 12. Boy, I just thought Oak Ridge was going to get a win last week. That's a tough loss for them. Yeah. And then uh, here's here comes the track meet in 1A, Chris. Yeah, and in, in 1A, uh, let's see, Lowell 66, Silets Valley 24, Mapleton 68, Mohawk 14, and Mackenzie 50, Crow 26, uh, Triangle Lake Triangle Lake 52, Yoncala 28, in, interesting in the Triangle Lake game. Triangle Lake had 650 yards of total offense. Wow. Um, but the scores look lower to me. It looks like their their average day, their game average for scoring points is going down a little bit. Well, they weren't in the seventies, if that's what <laughs> you mean. Yeah. So next week, uh, Triangle Lake and Lowell will be facing off. The winner uh, will take the uh, Special District Five One A League. Both teams are five and zero in the league. So Lowell and Triangle Lake been gearing up for this game, and their uh, Triangle Lake will come out to Lowell to see how that goes. I, I wanted to ask you, Marvin, about the Midwestern League. Um, I had thought I had heard or read maybe from somebody that if Springfield were to defeat Churchill and Ashland were to get a loss to Eagle Point, that Springfield and Ashland would share the league. Do you know if that's true or not, if they both have the same identical record, one loss in league? Well, it's sort of true. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, in fact, by record, they would share the title. But, of course, Ashland owns the tiebreaker against okay. Springfield. So they, uh, Ashland, with their victory over Willamette, uh, pretty much wrapped up the Midwestern League title. Yeah, they've got, uh, they've got to go to Eagle Point, which could be a little tougher, not having an away game. And um, it could be tougher the way Eagle Point's been playing lately, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Eagle Point is uh, no longer uh, that uh, rollover game they used to be. They're playing some really good football down there. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, if <coughs> excuse me, if that happens, they would have identical records. But uh, Ashland is uh, pretty much the league champion. All right. Well, let's let's go right into Stump Marvin then. Marvin, are you ready for that? I am. Let's let's go. Okay. So, you know, I want to say at this point, I really enjoy the Stump Marvin intro, and I want to do a shout out to our friend Jeff Baird for doing that for me. That's uh, very nice. All right, well, let's give him a thank you. Jeff Baird did make that intro for Stump Marvin, and I think he pretty much did it to celebrate the few times that you get one right, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to nudge you. Okay, so... Um, Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Is this going to be a Sayus Law question? Well, uh, since you told me not to tell you, I'm not going to tell you. Okay, all right. Uh, here's all the right. question. Very good, Marvin. Uh, here's your question. Um, how many times... 
has Sayuslaw High School been in the state championship game? Oh. How many <laughs> times have they been in it? You know, the, the final game. So Final and, game. Yeah. And, part two, have they won any state championships? So to answer your question, yes, it is a Sayuslaw question. And that's yeah. in honor of head coach Tim Dodson, who is our interview today. Well, I have no clue. Oh. Um, I'll write that down. I do, I, you know, I do recall Sayuslaw being in a state championship game, and I believe they won one. Okay, so that you think they've been, they've been in one and won one. Okay. I think they've your, been. I think they've been. Answer? No, it's not my okay. final answer because I think they've been in more than. <laughs> you that. You keep trying. You're going to get it right. Oh, I this know. is how you typically do stuff. Is you kind of just <laughs> figure stuff out. You you get around to it, and that's good. That's logical. Yeah. Well, I I am an analyst by trade, <laughs> and that's what I do is analyze. So um, I'll give I'm, you a few more seconds to think about that. No, they've been I, in I, one and they've won one. Is so far where you're at. Yeah, I think I'm going to say. They've been in, and this is just a stab for our listeners. I'm going to say they've been in three and won one. Okay. All right. Um, well, you're partially right. Your first answer was right. They've been in. Uh, they've been in two, actually, oh, okay. and and won one. Yes, I do recall them winning one. I yeah. do. So I get, I get, I get a, I get a, a one out of two on that one. And there's going to be a follow-up question here once uh. I share, share some of the information. Uh, they won the title 21-14 to 14 in overtime against Sisters in 2006. And last year, 2011, they lost 40... No, wait a minute. That would have been two years ago. Yep. 45-40, to 40, they lost to LaSalle in 2011. So, last question for Stump Marvin. Now we know Sayuslaw has been in two state championships, winning once in 06. Who was the coach of Sayuslaw at the time of their last state championship in football, last participation or win? Well, their win. Not, oh, when in two thousand six, when they won the state championship in two thousand six. Who yeah. was their coach? Who was the coach? Gee whiz! And you're a pretty analytical guy. I have a feeling you'll be able to figure this one out. But gosh, was it was it Tim Dotson? It was Tim Dotson. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You did good, Marvin. Yeah. Well. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And that's Stump Marvin. Excellent. Well, are we going to take a break? Yeah, I think we should probably take a break before we move into the interview with Tim Donson, Mark. Okay, well, you're listening to Prep Talk, Lane County's only talk show about football in Lane County, Oregon. We'll be right back. Michael Smith did send something to me.
This is Prep Talk. I'm Chris Park, and with my co-host here, uh, Marvin Hammersmith. Speaking with us this evening on the telephone is Sayus Law head football coach Tim Dotson. Uh, coach Dotson, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with Prep Talk and discuss some high school football with us. Oh, you're very welcome. Glad to, glad to do it. Well, first of all, uh, can you give our listeners a little background um, uh, regarding your experience, such as how long you've been coaching and where you've coached at, uh, maybe how many years you've been at Sayus Law High School? Oh, John, sure. I, uh, gosh, this is uh, my 28th fall overall and my, uh, what, my 24th? 24th at Sayus Law, and this is my 18th fall as a head coach. All right, excellent. Wow. So you're you're just getting into it. It sounds like I, I am. I'm just getting into it. I'm, I'm just almost figuring some things out. <laughs> so so far, your team is seven zero this season. Um, tell us a little bit about your team. Um, if you could describe your team for us um, using three adjectives, how would you describe your team? Well, I'm, I'm a PE teacher. I'm not really not sure. I know what an adjective is. No, um, <laughs> we. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know if disciplined is an adjective. I think it's more of a noun. Okay. Um, but I, I would put that in our uh, in our um, a, as one thing uh, that I, I I think our kids have done a nice job. I, I think our kids are physical, um, yeah, both um, both offensively and defensively. So that would be you know the next next one. Okay. And then I think we provide uh, people a little. Um, they they have to prepare, so we're kind of multi dimensional. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Well, tell us about, uh, speaking of the team, tell us about some of the leaders of the Sayuslaw Vikings so far this season. Well, I, I think you got to you know, start with our, our mainstay in, in Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson is, a, you know, this will be his third year, three year starter for us. Um, you know, he comes from a, a great family of football. Uh, you, know, you obviously know that, you know, the Johnson family of, of, the, of the Sheldon group, and, and this, is, um, this is a nephew of. of of all the Johnsons, and so he is uh, pretty. He's pretty amazing, uh, young man, uh, playing wide receiver and defensive back, and just being a our team leader. So uh, you know, we kind of you know rally around him, and he rallies us around. And so he he's very good. And then um, I got a you know in the, in the offensive line spot, I have a kid by the name of Nick McKenzie, who's a senior, who's just. You know, really done a a, a superb job. Uh, you know, um, and I add. Jeremy Moore to him on the on the offensive and defensive front, and and Nick and I'm sorry, Mitch Stonelink um, on the offensive and defensive front. Those three kids have just just really have done a nice job um, for us and have come a long way. So, um, uh, you know, a couple of those kids were like running back, wide receiver type kids um, as middle school and and actually through their sophomore year when we finally began to convince them that they were linemen and they've done a nice job. You know, kind of taking that under their wing and, and, and getting uh, to be as good as they can at that, even though they would much rather be playing someplace else. Well, that's fantastic. Hey, as a follow up to that, so do you, what kind of uh, uh, pre high school programs are there available for kids to play football over in Florence? Well, we we're, we're blessed enough to have a you know a middle school program, so we have seventh and eighth grade football. We have a seventh grade team and an eighth grade team, and then. Oh, I bet you probably five or six years ago, uh, Boys and Girls Club started a, a contact uh, five, six football, uh, Pop Warner type of thing uh, that we go around the South Coast. But uh, our kids have, um, with uh, Boys and Girls Club have, have had, um, you know, kind of bike football at the second, third grade, or I guess they probably go by eight, like it's a seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11, 12 grade, grade level. And so all these kids have kind of been playing throughout, and, and we have kids continue to play throughout the, the community. Yeah, that's great to have those. Uh, the, for lack of a better term, we call those feeder programs. But it's real important to have those programs around so that those kids uh, have a chance to get acclimated to football. So that when they get to you, they're ready. They're ready to learn. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. And you know, the the other part of it is, you know, Florence is a you know really is a great a great place and great community. And so, um, you know, on a Friday night, um, you know, our our Football field packed, and it's packed with a lot of kids, and a lot of the kids are watch, watching our watching our kids play and, and being excited about getting a chance to be a part of them. That's fantastic. Well, last week your team had a buy and was idle. Uh, was that a planned buy, or did a game get dropped? No, it, it, well, there was no game to be added. Uh, you know, we had a 
Uh, you know, the OSA added Marshfield into our league, and so that gave us a buy and, and caused us to cause everybody in our league to uh, lose all their preseason games, and so we all shuffled around to try to find some games. Uh, and we had we got the draw of a week six buy. Um, someone in our league obviously has a week seven buy, has a buy. Um, you no, know, actually has a buy. I guess this Friday night. Um, so it's just it's just one of those things, and there are teams to play come week six. Did that uh, cause you to prepare for this game this week any differently, or did you kind of uh, uh, keep to the same? Um, well, it, it sure allowed us to get some rest. Um, we, you know, after you know, we play. You know, unlike I mean, like most teams, you know, you play seven games in eight weeks. Uh, you know, you had this zero week game, so so I mean, you're playing a game every Friday night, and um, so the needed. I. I Really look forward to it because it was, you know I just think kids need rest. Um, you know I'm not a big zero week person. I think kids need time to prepare. Kids need time to be kids, and um, so that allowed us last week to kind of just be a kid for a little bit, um, which I which I think is important. All right, uh, this is a prep talk. Uh, Chris Park and Marvin Hammerschmidt. Uh, we're talking with Syus Law head football coach Tim Dodson. Um, Coach Dodson, um, let's talk a little bit about North Bend. Um, the Vikings are, your team's averaging 44 points per game on offense and giving up 15 on defense. Pretty similar for North Bend. Um, they're 7-1. and one. They have one loss to Cottage Grove by a point. They're averaging 48 points and giving up 17. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about North Bend for our listeners? Uh, they're, they're a very good football team. They are very athletic. Uh, um, you know they they obviously played this you know the state championship game last year, um, and uh, returned a lot of those kids that played in that uh, that played those extra games, and obviously that's a big deal. The longer you go in the playoffs, you know the the, the better your younger kids get. Um, so you know just in that part, they're they're that much better. They have a great great quarterback in Cam Lucero. Uh They have a great um, a linebacker and. Um, Oh, uh, 33 Lard. Um, I'm trying to think what his first name is. You got his number down, huh? <laughs> yeah, I got I got their numbers down. And, uh, <laughs> and then, um, you know, they have a, an outstanding junior quarter um, and an uh, outstanding running back and five Hawk. And, uh, you know, they're just they're just very talented. And, and they have uh, a couple nice um, uh, linemen that have returned for them and, and are doing a wonderful job. And then they've uh, rebalanced out the kids that, that they lost with graduation with a couple nice juniors and a nice sophomore kid. So they, uh, you know, they are they are well rounded. They have they, they have a team that has that has good solid uh, senior leadership, followed by uh, great underclassmen that are making great plays for them. And um, after this year, they're going to be just as good in the next year and just as good the year after that. So you'll be hearing a lot of of North Bend um, over and over and over again. Well, uh, speaking of that game this week, uh, can you give us two or three keys to the game that's going to be important uh, this Friday against North Bend? Well, uh, uh, just, uh, gosh, it's, it's going to be a great environment. If, if people uh, are looking for a football game to go to, I would say this is a football game to go to. Um, the say you saw North Bend matched up with this Bend, you know, great. And uh, uh, the atmosphere is, is truly um, uh, a great environment. And so this, this will be a fun one. Uh, and so it, it's really going to be who can maintain composure in that kind of atmosphere. I mean, when you're talking of, you know, 16, 17-year-old kids, how do they handle um, all the hype and everything that kind of has gone along with it? I think that that's going to be a big key uh, and play into it um, for, for both teams. Um, obviously, for us, we've got to contain Cam uh, Lucero. He is just an outstanding quarterback. He can run and can throw. Um, he really can do it all. He is very dangerous, and, and they do a nice job uh, do, uh, allowing him to do some things, and he does a great job distributing the ball to all the receivers. So uh, our ability uh, to limit uh, the number of possessions, I think, will be big, and our ability to uh, not give up big plays and make people earn it will be uh, uh, a big thing. And, I, you know, and if I'm North Bend, they're probably saying that, you know, saying a little bit about the same thing, the same thing about us. Um, you know, uh, okay. uh, not giving up big plays and making us earn each, each thing, and, and and so I think those are going to be really the key to it. Um, obviously, turnover uh, is is huge. Uh, you know, we lost uh, last year; they beat us at our place last year for the league title last game 
the season also, and uh, and uh, and there were a lot of turnovers in that game on, on both sides of the ball, and a couple of those ended up uh, tossing, uh, well, actually both teams, but they ended up uh, making a few more plays down the stretch, and so uh, uh, those those were those were big deals, and so that will be a big deal this Friday night. This sounds like a fun time. Oh, I, I, it is. I mean, it's. It, it really is high school football um, at its best. I think you will see it, and, you know, down in down in North Bend. Uh, I really do. I mean, uh, um, we, I, I tell, I have told our kids, we'll be very, we're very blessed, and, and it's a great opportunity to to play and be together, and and to have this opportunity. Not every high school football team gets these kind of opportunities, and so um, and they need to appreciate it and, yeah. and go with it and deal with it. Not so even if they, you know, if we even if we lose, I mean, what an opportunity to have had a chance to play in that game because people play their whole careers without playing in title games. Yeah. Well, it's a game they're going to remember the rest of their lives probably too. Yeah, absolutely. Whether and, and hopefully they remember with a positive whether the scoreboard is in their favor or not, but hopefully they remember the, you know, just the week of preparation leading up to it uh, and and everything that kind of happened. And then now we uh, handle ourselves uh, either win or lose after the game is over. You're listening to Prep Talk. Uh, this is uh, Sayusaw head football coach Tim Dodson. Uh, coach Dodson, can you name um, two or three players not from your team that have impressed you so far in your league, the uh, Far West League? Oh, gosh. I, that, I, you got to ask me their names. I say that's a hard part. I can tell you their numbers. Well, go with the numbers. <laughs> it sounds like you've watched a lot of film. There's a very good, well, a, a Schaefer, Schaefer, number seven, the quarterback at Douglas, a pretty talented young man. Okay. Um, and he's a three year starter for Douglas, and he, uh, he has just been. He's done amazing things this year. Uh, the running back for um, uh, for South Umpqua, number six, uh, is, is a very talented running back and has done an impressive okay. job. And then Sutherland has a couple defensive ends that um, were very, very impressive um, in in their film and as far as 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 far as their play goes. And then. Um, um, boy, I just like um, just uh, I kind of like the speed and the quickness of Marshfield. You know, they just kind of been you know kind of just they were fun, a lot of fun to watch on film as far as, as far as their movement and aggressiveness in their play. Okay, great, thank you for that. Um, not counting your own team, can you give us your top three four A teams in the state? Well, I, you know, I think you know it's all those, those all those guys are unbeaten, so you got to put North Bend up there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I think North Bend's one of one of those teams that probably deserves there. I think you look at Banks. I think you look at Columbus uh, as 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 rounding it out um, as far as those those teams that uh, truly are up top um, there. And I think it would Cottage Grove probably sits in that, even though Cottage Grove sits with a couple losses. Okay, uh, they sit up there. Okay, thank you. Great. Well, uh, last question. Um, kind of a hypothetical question. Chris may have a follow-up hypothetical because he loves those kind of questions. Can you? Is it possible for you to compare the uh, 2013 Sioux Vikings with your state championship team of 2006? No, I, yeah, I don't think there's you know, trying to compare is is just very very difficult, and I think it does it, it a little bit does disservice to both groups because uh, I think every group has their own um, uh, their own mindset, their own attitude, their own environment. Uh, their own things that kind of happen and go on. Um, gosh, Go uh, Those sixteen was it was a lot of fun to be around, and this group is is just as much fun to be around. So when you sit back and try to compare, um, I think you're really you know, um, you know, like I said, you're, you're doing both kind of a disservice by trying to make that comparison. But you know, this is what what we're what we're oh what we're seven and zero, oh, and I, what last year's group was seven and zero oh at the same point. And I think we're. Uh, the year in front of that, we were seven zero at this point. Um, so the, the thing I, I tell this group is is there is a pretty good company um, as far as football teams. Uh, there are you know there aren't necessarily a lot of seven zero or eight zero uh, football teams. And and you look at uh, based by history over you know fifty years, you know over the last you know four or five years we've had, we've been very blessed to have it. And so these guys they begin to think that that that's normal, but it, it is not normal. You don't get those kind of uh, things all the time, so yeah. they just need to really kind of appreciate um, appreciate it and take it for what it is, and that it is theirs. It, it it's not um, say you saw history of last year, and it's not say you saw history of of two years ago in the eleven. It's not say you saw history of the oh six or the eighty two.
Well, welcome back to Prep Talk. Uh, this is Chris Park and Marvin Hammerschmidt. Uh, Prep Talk, a one and only internet-based radio broadcast dedicated to high school sports in Lane County, Oregon, in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Well, Marvin, that was interesting uh, listening to uh, getting a chance to speak with Tim Donson, the head coach at Sayus Law out in Florence. Yeah, you know, I think uh, he's getting his team ready for a big game this week and uh, positioning his team for a nice playoff run. Yeah, I think that's the key. You know, they uh, they ended up uh, losing last year. I think it was um, who did they end up losing to in the uh, early rounds? So you saw did they? Oh, a couple of years ago it was LaSalle that gave them a um, exit from the playoffs. But I liked how he talked about coastal football. Um, you know, a little bit there. And this is this is you know uh, the question there about sort of the the title of you know the, the coast champ, so to speak. You know, because they've already beat Marshfield. Yep. Um, and they beat Brookings, uh, so uh, interesting. That's going to be a tough game. Interesting game. Sayusla at North Bend. You've been out to North Bend at that field at all? You know, I uh, there was uh, a game a couple of years ago that Marist played Marshfield, and they played them down there, and I missed it. Mm. Um, okay. So I have not been to their facility, but. I have not ever heard a bad word about that place. Yeah, nice facility. It's got covered stands for the visitors, that's which a, is unusual. That's um, a key on the coast. Yeah, and and uh, Cottage Grove has another nice 4A facility, but they don't have a covered stand for the visitors at Cottage Grove. But those two are the top. Um, so Sayusla at North Bend, the winner will win the league, and that's important uh, in the playoff positioning uh, for 4A. Right now, uh, Sayusla is number six in the rankings. Uh, but really, what's more important for 4A is you want to win your league. And, and this is one of the things with the OSA rankings. Is not, it's not always the same from one classification to the next. 5A, it doesn't really matter so much winning your league. It's more about you know, winning the league for pride. But for 4A, uh, the winner of the, um, uh, the Far West League uh, will get a bye. So uh, one of these teams is going to be a pretty darn good team. Uh, whoever doesn't win this game between Sayusla and North Bend will have uh, to play in the playing round. And we'll host. They'll probably be high enough up in the ranking. But um, Yeah, I believe if you win your league, you're going to host the first game that you play yeah. once the play-in games are done. So, you know, I, it, it's it's a big game. Yeah. Uh, there isn't any question about it. It's uh, uh, in 4A football, uh, one of the bigger games around the state probably. Yeah, yeah. And two good teams. Uh, you know, I the, the benefit of winning this game for a Soyuz Law is – they're going to get a buy and get to rest a little bit. Um, they just had a buy this past week, um, so you know I can remember North Bend being a part of the Midwestern League, and I can remember when they went down to 4A and almost dominated 4A right off the bat <clears throat> when they moved down. Hmm. Um, you know, and I kind of expected that just a little bit out of Marshfield, hmm. and it didn't happen. Yeah, North Bend's actually had a pretty good few years uh, recently, and uh, Marshfield is, is down a little bit. The enrollments there have kind of flipped, I think. Um, so that's that's the big game of the week coming up for 3A. Other other 3A games, uh, or probably that was 4A, excuse me. Uh, other 4A games, Elmira at Junction City, Sweet Home at Cottage Grove. Uh, five, uh, 6A, sorry. 6A, South Eugene is at Thurston this week. Uh, Sheldon goes down to Grants Pass, and that actually can be a tough game for Sheldon this mm -hmm. week because yeah. Grants Pass is playing really well. Uh, they especially play well at home, and uh, Sheldon has kind of struggled a little bit on the road this year. Yeah, do they have a chance to actually uh, win the league uh, if Sheldon were to beat Grants Pass and North Medford were were to stumble? Is that... Um Kind of the same same scenario again, uh, you know. Again, in in six A, winning your league is important mm -hmm. um, because the, the the top four get in. But as far as positioning, yes, they would tie for the league title. But North Medford holds the tiebreaker against Sheldon. So, mm -hmm. okay. In that instance, North Medford would be the uh, uh, Southern Conference's number one representative in the state playoffs. Yeah, okay. And the top four in the Southwest are going to make it. Children will be in that for sure. But what they're fighting for now is <clears throat> bragging rights of winning the league. So I guess it's possible that they right. could sort of, uh, if North got a got a loss. Uh, um, so uh, how about 3A? Uh, 3A, uh, big game is Pleasant Hill is at Harrisburg. Uh, Pleasant Hill had a nice win last week. 
they need to do it again um, for the um, far, excuse me, uh, uh, Pack West. For the Pack West League. Thank you for reminding me there, Marvin. Um, they top four are going to go, so they need to they need to get a win, um, and it's not going to be easy out there in Harrisburg. Harrisburg is undefeated. Uh, in uh, 5A, uh, North Eugene's going to be at Marist this week. Springfield is at Churchill, and uh, Willamette is idle this week. 2A, uh, we have Oak Ridge at Oakland. Oh, I forgot to mention Creswell is at Salem Academy in 3A. <coughs> and uh, do you have any 1A uh, games, Marvin? Uh, 1A, Mohawk is at McKenzie. Uh, Silas Valley is at Mapleton. Yonkala travels to Crow, but the big game, it's all for all the marbles in, one, in the 1A league here. Triangle Lake is at Lowell. Yeah, that's going to be a great one. That's what they call the 1A Special District 5 League. I couldn't come up with a, anything more creative than that. <laughs> uh, Lowell undefeated. Triangle Lake undefeated. That's going to be for the title, so it'll be exciting. And I'll be willing to bet they probably score in the 60s, each of them. What do you think? I think it is. it could possibly be that close of a game, if you want to call it close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could be 60 to 50. It could be. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I really, really wanted to be able to go out and watch that game uh, this Friday, but I have a previous commitment, so I will not be able to go down there. Good luck to both of those teams. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to catch some highlights on the news at uh, 1130. Did you want to talk about any OSAA rankings um, before we go? Or I also have one other thing I wanted to mention. Yeah, you know, I think this is the last uh, week of the regular season, so... You know, just to kind of review where people are and, uh, you know, kind of maybe even talk about some special circumstances come playoff time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll start with 6A, and, uh, you know, nothing really jumps out at me at this point. You know, Jesuit and Tigard are 1 and 2, Central Catholic 3. Um, you know, for me, really no surprise there. Yeah. Uh, and as far as, you know, again, the OSA rankings are based on an RPI formula, so... You know, I, from talking with some of the other coaches that we've talked to throughout the, the season so far, really Tiger seems to be the team to be at this Tigard point. Tiger and Central Catholic and, uh, you know, Central Catholic actually has beat Jesuit, but Jesuit is number one despite being 6-2. and two. Right. Um, their opponent's winning record has helped them. Um, but, yeah, those teams are, are, you know, those are the top three. I think you know, we mentioned Justin Stark in our interview week or so ago, his top three right off the bat without even having to blink were yep. Jesuit, Tiger, and Central Catholic. He didn't even hesitate on that. Uh, Sheldon and North Medford are eight and nine respectively. Um, you know, uh, once you, in 6A, you know, we've talked about it to death, but, you know, again, uh, positioning in the playoffs depends on your OSAA ranking. So everybody gets to play. Everybody least, gets in in 6A. Yep, everybody gets in, all 42 teams. Um, but the OSAA rankings after the play-in game, then that's important as far as positioning goes and yeah. who you're playing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the higher, those, those higher-up teams um, off of the 20 teams that are in the play-in, you want to be up as high as you can because the yeah. lowest team is going to get uh, – Jesuit, mm -hmm. Tiger, and, and Central Sheldon Catholic. is at number eight. They will probably not have to play the obviously a play-in game because they're in the top four in their league, and they're high enough uh, in that second round game that they'll have a home game. Yes. Uh, what that also means is that Thurston and South Eugene will be on the road for their play-in probably for sure. Uh, South Eugene's thirty-seven, Thurston thirty-nine. Uh, they're more than likely going to have to hit the road. And if, and if they win those games, they're pretty much guaranteed to be on the road again. What about 5A? 5A is, again, I call it my specialty. Um, you know, I'm very familiar with the 5A. Uh, again, the, the top eight do not have a play-in game. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you win your league. It does not matter if you win your league or not. If you're in the top eight, you do not have a play-in game. And then teams 9 through 24... Mm -hmm. They will have a play-in game. So uh, if it uh, started today, uh, North Eugene would uh, their season would be over um, because they're uh, they're at uh, thirty-six. Thirty-six, yeah. and uh, 
Well, Lamont Lamont is would, at 30. They, and they would be out as well. Uh, just uh, Churchill on the bubble. Churchill is on the bubble, yeah. and um, you know uh, they. So this this game Although against Springfield is huge. They might be able to lose that game and still move up, or yes. still stay. So, yeah, yeah, so that's that's the key they, there. They, they might be okay, but one of the things that jumped out to me today, when I was looking at this, <clears throat> so those sixteen teams that do a play-in game, the winning eight teams now get paired up to the top eight. Mm -hmm. The Toast top eight will be at home, but again, one plays 16, two plays 15, and so right. forth and so on. So if it all panned out today, I just want to note for our, our local fans out there, uh, Sherwood is one and would play if it all, if this all just came, just if they just all played the way they're supposed to and won, they would play the Dalles, South Wasco County. Number two is West Albany. Mm -hmm. And Marist sits at 15. Oh, and boy, I bet you the Marist team would like another crack at that West Albany team. And that would be at West Albany. Cause that would be, be on the road. Seed. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, key thing is, you know, got to win these next few, this last game, and get a positioning for playoff. Let's talk about 4A. Cottage Grove is uh, number three in the rankings. They're on their track to probably win the uh, Sky M, uh, which would be great because I'll. Uh, I believe they'll they'll get a bye as far as that's the qualifications for playoffs there. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, sixteen teams qualify for the uh, the four A. Is that is that how that works, Marvin? Um, yeah, it's sixteen sixteen team yeah. OSA bracket. But uh, if you win the Sky M League along with other league winners, they'll get a bye. Yes. Okay, so that's the key. Also, um, in the North Bend Sayusla game, the winner of that game will win uh, the Far West League. So. Um, that's the biggie there. That's uh, that's the four A, um, and we also we already mentioned three A a little bit um, as far as where we're at with the rankings there. Four teams from the Pac West will will make it, and Pleasant Hill is fighting uh, to get into that. It doesn't look like Creswell is um, is going to um, make the playoffs under that criteria. Not in the top four. No. <clears throat> so that's you know that's how it's uh, shaping up um, for the five A I believe the rankings freeze on uh, this Saturday at midnight. Mm -hmm. um, I believe for six A and four A and again I'm not as familiar with them but I believe that at six A and four A uh, the rankings will freeze after the play-in games. Oh okay. Um, so I'm not sure about that. I, um... I'd have to look that up. That's that's interesting how that's different. That's one thing I wish OSA would be consistent, consistent. about. Consistent. From 6A, 5A, 4A, some leagues, you got to win your league and you get to buy. Uh, other classifications, it's... Uh, Based know, it on an RPI. Yeah. yeah, so it's confusing for fans to follow that. And, and what is. fans usually do is just follow their team. That's right. So, And we're here to confuse you even <laughs> further. <laughs> I did want to mention before we wrap up here... Uh, we got uh, a listener, I was going to say a viewer, but a listener actually uh, sent us an email, and you can also just send us a, you know, uh, information on Twitter. We have a Twitter account, at Prep Talk Eugene. Uh, Michael Smith sent in some information. Uh, he's been a, a long-time listener now. This is the second time we've gotten an email from him. I think he might be one of our, our big listeners. He uh, sent us some information about... Uh, Grant High School in Sacramento, they have a very large offensive line. Try and guess the weight, the average weight of their offensive line in high school, Marvin. Is this a, a, a follow-up to well, the stump, Marvin? Or? It's not really a stump, Marvin. I just sort of on the, on the fly tried to do it. Remember, these are high school kids, so, you know, what do you think the average weight is for their I high did, school line? Well, I did actually, uh, I'll tell you, I, I saw this article. Oh, uh, see, you already know. Yeah, it, it, it actually was on uh, Yahoo's uh, homepage. Okay. Okay. Uh, it made uh, their uh, What's Trending Now and yeah, their average weight for this high school team, three hundred and seventeen pounds. Wow, that's amazing. That's Grant High School in Sacramento. Uh, so that's a, uh, UCLA and USC have a smaller line, and the 49ers uh, have a bigger line of pro teams. Just barely, yeah. though. But the smallest guy on Grant High School's uh, line in Sacramento is five eleven two forty, and they also have a fellow who's six three three hundred. A six four three hundred, then they start getting bigger. Six six three twenty six four four hundred. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. 
pushing on a defensive line, and I'm sure that I, I did. You see what their record was by any chance? I think they were uh, four and two or something. I don't know precisely, but they're, wow. they're doing pretty good. But they're not undefeated. I remember they had a couple losses, but that's amazing. Boy, those guys when they run on the field, I think the field tilts to the side. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of big certainly, guys. Certainly, the ground would shake as they're running out of the tunnel there. <laughs> so, but yeah, thank you, Michael Smith, for uh, sending us that. That was a great uh, high school related article. That uh, yeah. It was very interesting. And other other questions for Stump Marvin or trivia or things you want us to share, uh, you can send us uh, you know the information uh, via Twitter, and uh, we'll try to get it on there. We appreciate. What was that, that. Twitter handle again? Um, at Prep Talk Eugene. Excellent. I almost said dot com, but at, <laughs> at Prep Talk Eugene. Yeah, go ahead and follow us, not like us. Follow us. You can like us anyway, but that's different. Great. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this edition of Prep Talk. Make sure to tune in for our next show. Uh, and we're going to have an interview with uh, Pleasant Hill coaches uh, uh, Randy Fisher, uh, or coach rather, Randy Fisher. Uh, again, uh, as always, uh, check that uh, Twitter account at Prep Talk Eugene for the schedule and for accessing shows. I'm Marvin Hammersmith. I'm Chris Park. You've been listening to Prep Talk. Until next time, so long.